Yeah. It's yeah. a new year. We're seeing how things happen. And welcome <laughs> to Ask Chris Anything. This is Google Photos. Google Photos, Ask Chris Anything. And I think we're, how are we doing? Do you have a slideshow? I do. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, slideshow goes, goes, goes here. right here. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have made you work on your birthday. <laughs> we had all this stuff all set up and our internet went down. Hey, it's part of the part of the deal. Give me just a minute here. Chris is going to sing and dance for us for a minute and I will get that thing going for us. Yeah, this okay. is not our what does this button do episode number. This is just is our often scheduled <laughs> open Q and A for Google Photos. Uh -huh. So it's, but we decided to do it on a Sunday afternoon when we normally schedule because that's when people kind of expect to see us. So, mm -hmm. so here we are. Yeah, I think I'm just about. We got there. we got several questions in via email, and we appreciate all of that. That's and really then nice. those of you who are here live are welcome to write a question in the in the chat All right. and we'll get to them as well. Okay, here we are. Oh, I had to do one other thing while we're going here. Keep going. You're doing <laughs> great, sweetie. <laughs> Keep dancing. <laughs> I will uh, start off. Okay, but, but hold Really, you all take lots of photos. I know I do. We were just on uh, vacation, and so many of them are what we would typically refer to as duplicates. And But you want them organized. You want them just automatically taken care of. And Google Photos does that so well. And uh, you probably have some questions. I know. I'm so lucky. Because when I have a question about Google <laughs> Photos, I know who to go to. She has the answers. And when I don't know the answer, I have my fellow group of Google Photos experts through the Google Product Expert Program, and I can ask them. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's the best part to me of being a Google product expert is that I have a, a, a group of fellow experts. Yeah. You know, and Chris wrote that book, Learn Google Photos. It's available on Amazon, and you can also get it at learngooglephotos.com. She keeps saying she's going to get the latest update, but, and she will. Things keep changing, right? I mean, right. you know, Google Photos, anything on the computer doesn't stay the same. But, you know, she has been keeping everything up to date, and that all that stuff is on a website, and you can see the ongoing updates at this link, or you can scan that code there and get to the Google Photos updates for the book. Now, people who have purchased the book have an additional link that they can use to get to all the materials, all the materials, including tutorial videos and things like that. So it's a, still a good idea to buy the book, right? <laughs> I think so. Of course. All right. So we'll show you a little bit about about the updates. Okay. So do you want to get into the? Uh... Well, first, first, I want to do a little demo. If you have subscribed to our newsletter, yeah. And if you haven't, you can scan that little code right there that by. By my face. Oh, I can point to it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe to our newsletter. If you received the last newsletter, the first article was a how to to do vignettes. Hmm. And I think a lot of people don't know that the editing features are there at all in Google Photos, let alone a cool one like vignettes. So I, I want to show you that. All right. And I'm going to do it on my Android phone. Doesn't really matter though, does it? No, this this works just the same, exactly the same on the iPhone or on the Android phone. So this photo right here of my wonderful husband, Jim. And <laughs> I, I like that it's, well, I don't want to crop it. 
but I want to just kind of make the edges less important and highlight his face. I tap on the edit button. And then you have two rows. The bottom row controls what you see on the top row. So each time I select something on the bottom row, the top row changes. Vignette is under adjustments and look at all these. And vignette is all the way at the right end. Vignette. So now I've chosen vignette, but it's at zero. Well, this is a slider. So you can just make the vignette, the vignette bigger and the highlighted part smaller. Or, and you can just rub left and right and get it right to where you want it. I like that. Now I'm going to add one more thing. Of course. The vignette is available exactly the same on Android and iOS. This next thing is only on Android, and it's called markup. And I want to type some text on this. And I'll say, happy birthday, Jim. Yes, that's right. I made him work on his birthday. And you can drag that down into place. And done. And now save copy. It will not let you save these changes over the original. So you have to save copy. And then if you want, you can delete the original. But it, now, where'd it go? Should have been right there. Ah, what did I do? I don't know. Did anybody <laughs> see me do something that, that didn't work? Yeah, I always... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, repetition is good for learning. <laughs> oh, I know because I am in a in a query. Yeah, Google Photos is great at finding photos, right? <laughs> when you take so many of them, it can still be a little tough to find all your photos. I'm going to do search for Jim and I should find the one that I just did the vignette on, as well as all the others. And I keep, nope, it's not there. So I must, well, there's a couple of them. Nope, none of, none of them say happy birthday. Okay, I'm going to do this again. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> and adjust. Scroll all the way over to vignette. Drag the slider till the vignette is how you want it. And done. Markup. Text. Happy birthday, Jim. Done. Drag it down. Done. And save copy. Saved. All right. There it is. Okay. I don't know what I did last time, but once again, repetition is good. <laughs> so that is happy birthday, Jim. So yeah, right. Just uh and yes, I made him work on his birthday, but do not feel sorry for him. We please. partied all week last week. <laughs> we were in the Bahamas. And we had friends visiting from the UK. We went diving. And you got to show them just a minute. You, is it queued up? No, uh, it's not. No, I need We to... dove with hammerhead sharks. Okay, I'll get that. And we, we really did. You wouldn't believe how uh, unimposing the hammerhead sharks are that it did not feel dangerous at all. Oh God, we were going to be eaten alive. <laughs> Come on. The dive masters were feeding them and they were just like bugs. Mm. That's good. This is just really good. That's, yeah, that's a good they are big. They are, are really big. big. Beautiful. Now look at this. The dive master just holds on to his nose and yeah, leads him along. Now that was a tiger shark. That was that was weird. That was scary. That was fun. <laughs> and <laughs> we had all, all right. those nurse sharks around. It was, I have a whole video. 
I'll put it up there later if anybody's interested. We'll, we'll have a fun thing there. All so, right. Do we what, have some people you want to say hi to? Gosh. Yeah, before we, we start with questions. But... Oh, my God. Well, There's... hello, everybody. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. All right. There's Ron and Linda. She's got something to do, but she'll be back later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. Everybody knows one another. Bright sunshine, Finger Lakes. I can't believe it. Yes, we are back home in Fort Lauderdale right now, and it is 79 degrees and sunny. Thank you, Judy. I'm going to have a great day today. Uh, so much experience. <laughs> uh, hmm. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate you, too. <laughs> uh, Tom Parks, cold up there. I'm sorry to hear that. Vandenberg gets the Netherlands. I bet it's chilly, but maybe not for him. Who knows? Thank you so much. We still have not been to the Netherlands. I got to go. That's one of the places. My that... maiden name was Van Valkenburg, and yeah. I understand there's a town in, in the Netherlands that I have to go to. <laughs> Sunny Southern California. If you have two hours to introduce people to Google Photos, how would you do it? I would say watch Chris's class on Google Photos, number one, yeah, there's more than two hours there, but you could really get the the gist of it in, in less than two hours, I'm sure. Well, with two hours, I have one of our shows, which is about one hour, was what is Google Photos and how do you use it? That would be the raw introduction. And then one of our hands-on classes or the, the, the webinar that we did last month was doing more with Google Photos. So between those two, that's that's I think that's where I would start. That would be a great start. And then, of course, I would tweak it all book. over the place. <laughs> yeah, it makes a great gift, even if Christmas is over. You can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jack. We appreciate you. I hope things are going well in the what, low country Hi, of, Head. of South Carolina. Head Island. Happy yeah. New Year. Yeah, I'm cleaning the lens. <laughs> <laughs> Number one tip: Absolutely. Bill knows. Yeah, Bill knows. That's cool. <laughs> uh, Scott, Virginia. Hi, Mead. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. And cheers, cheers, cheers. No doubt, Mesa, Arizona. Okay, Linda says Happy New Year. Rainy California. Oh my gosh, you guys have been getting some lousy weather, but. And I, I just wish there was some way to more easily grab all that water and keep it and get rid of that drought. But apparently there's no way. Kathleen, as she is in New York City, we've seen her up there. It's cool. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> Detlef is in Berlin. in Berlin. Okay. And we have a question from you that you submitted via and we'll email. Get we'll get to it. Steve Masterson, Stewart, Florida. We will be seeing him at a rally in Georgia. In April, March, Some, yeah, April. yeah, the escapees. Okay. Uh, yeah, should be fun. More, more, more. And then we'll be done. We'll almost be okay. If uh, you delete a photo from Google Drive, will it be deleted, uh, deleted from Google Photos? No. Google Drive and Google Photos are completely separate. You cannot link them if you want to. You used to be able to but no more. So they are completely separate. Okay. And Barbara Warren is back from Egypt and Jordan. I can't wait to see her video. She does beautiful videos. She's interested in SSD for that. Oh, SSDs are the only way to go these days and prices for even one terabyte uh, solid state drives is what she's talking about. External drives. I have one here that the one that I took from over to Bimini is the one I, I use with my, my that's surface. a terabyte. Yeah, that's a terabyte. And like 79 bucks. It's rugged. It's handy. Uh, this is a Seagate one. I like it a lot. And yeah, they're, you got to have one. Absolutely. We'll talk okay. about it. It's easy to do. There's more. Okay. Has Google Photos answered or replied <clears> to <throat> any of your wishes lately? <laughs> she does have a wish list. Actually, yes, one. 
and and I might get to it. But the one of my favorite features has always been the ability to make little movies. You just select some pictures and say, make me a movie and it adds music and all that. And for the last year, that has been broken on Android. Oh, yeah. You I... can make the movie, but it never renders. Occasionally it would, but sometimes it never would. <laughs> but lately, and I'm not sure when it happened, you don't, you know, they really give no notifications of things. But it's working it, now. It's working now. So, so we'll upload a couple in and maybe be able to see some. Okay. Hi, Julie, Russ, Miramar. <laughs> Hurricane Wilson, Happy New Year. My Gmail is being threatened due to me. <laughs> Buy more stories. How do I remedy that? There yeah. A couple of ways, and she's going to be talking about that. Yeah, I will. There was another question, so I will be talking about that. But th the basic way is buy more storage. You know, that's the easiest. You can also delete some emails, delete some photos, but it's really quite a lot of work to delete enough to make any difference in your in your storage allotment. And Google for Roger Hurricane Wilson. He is a wonderful Blues guitarist. Wonderful guitarist. And he writes songs. He plays other people. Oh, he's just wonderful. Oh, shush. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get paid extra today. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to some of the questions that came in earlier. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> they're, they're down here. I'm almost No, done. they're in banners. I'm sorry. Uh, here's one. Yeah, we saw that one. All right. Sorry, dear. Okay. There. So the first one should be Ron, Ron Brown's, Ron B., and on his Pixel 6, when he takes a photo while using the texting app, I can't find it in Google Photos. And we played with that and hey, figured out. That's my phone. I know, because you have a Pixel. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to show. And first of all, you need to know what app you're using for your text messaging. So, Jim, we looked in Jim's settings, and it is using messages. You know, that's that's this one that looks like a speech bubble. Yeah, messages is what he uses for. And if you start, I don't, I don't even know what I use. I know, I, you know, really. it just happens. Most people don't. And if you start a message, and then take a photo. So this is what he's talking about. He's not adding a photo from his camera roll. He's taking a photo. And Jim did that with me earlier. And there it is. Now, that photo is not showing up in Google Photos. It's a shameless sponsor. Lazy Lion Coffee. A coffee, Try yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> So that photo did not show up in Google Photos. Why? Because it is in an on-device folder. And you find those on-device folders in Google Photos by going to library. And messages is a on-device folder. And notice the little cloud with the line through it that's saying photos taken by the messages app are not being uploaded to Google Photos cloud. You can change that by going in here and telling it, yes, I do want to back up photos taken by the messages app. Now, when I look at photos, the picture is there. So I like it. That's, that's, that's that one. You need to know what app it is and then find the folder where photos from that app are stored and turn on the backup. Same thing with like Snapseed. If you open a photo and go to Snapseed to edit it and save it, it will not show up in your Google Photos until you go to the device folder and tell it to back up that you want it in your Google Photos. All right. Mindy says, is there a way to get color pop feature on the computer? Short answer, no. But just for anybody who is wondering what is she talking about color pop i do want to to show that so here's 
here's a picture of Jim and me on a full moon cruise in Miami the other day. Oh, yeah. That moon over cool. Miami. Oh, and I'm going to start singing. Yeah, <laughs> if no. I click edit, I will get a bunch of what I call premium features. Maybe. <laughs> and since there are faces involved, those premium features include portrait and color pop. Portrait means blur the background. Color pop means make the background black and white. Oh, look at that. It thinks you're a part of the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling well. All right. I get no respect. <laughs> so, but yeah, those are only mobile features and they are only available either on the Pixel or on other phones if you are paying for storage. That makes you a premium subscriber to Google Photos, not a free subscriber. But it's not on the computer web version. Okay, Mindy yet. also wants <laughs> yet, always yet, always yet. How to yeah. share the memory highlights? This is from okay. Me too, yeah. That I'm going to go back to my. Oh, good. I I get my, my phone. phone back. And I'm going to go to the iPhone, even though it's it's exactly the same on the Android. I just like to switch back and forth so that you get the idea. So what I believe Mindy is talking about is. In your main photos grid, you know, this is just all my photos, my photo grid. At the very top, there is what they call a carousel of memories. So four years ago, one year ago, 14 years ago, look back at 2013, et cetera, et cetera. New stylized photo. I mean, there's all sorts of just special things up here. Also, every month. As I scroll back through time, at the beginning of every month, I now have a best of month. So here is best of January 2020. I open that up and there's Jim's friend, Jimmy Lyon, who comes down most every January. And I'm visits. looking forward to seeing him in a couple of weeks. We'll go diving and catch lobster. So he wants to share this whole memory with him, not just see... You tap the share button on iPhone. It's the square with the up arrow. You have your choice of share this photo or share the entire memory. If you share the entire memory, first it gives you the option to edit. Let's say that I don't want that picture in the memory. I can edit and, and yeah, uncheck that picture. All the rest of them are good, done and then share, and I can share it to Jim, and he will get that whole memory as a little, as a little slideshow, or in, in a link, and send. So that's how you do it. Open the memory, tap the share button, and tap the share this whole entire memory, not just this photo. All right, cool. Where was I? I was still over here in banners. Detlef, <clears throat> how to know what has been updated and is taking up Google storage space? Uh, somebody's getting a message that the storage is full. Yeah. Now, I, I want to read Detlef's. Th that's as much room as we have to put it on the, <laughs> on the on screen. On the screen. But I want to read his whole message. A friend who is new to computers has Google Photos installed on her phone, but not yet on her Mac. First point, there is nothing to install on a Mac. The way she sees what photos have been uploaded to the cloud is go to her Mac, open a browser, either Google Chrome or what's Safari. It, Safari, any any browser, and go to photos.google.com. Make sure she's logged in with her account and she's seeing directly into the cloud. There's no app on the, on the computer. She says that she sent all her pictures to Google 
and now gets a Google message on her phone that she has no storage left, but can buy more. She doesn't think that she has sent 15 gigabytes, but is unsure. How could she check what she sent and what she might delete? All, so two points I want to make. Number one, how to check. That 15 gigabytes of storage is shared between your Google Photos, your Gmail, and your Google Drive. So it might not be Photos that's taking up the space. It might be your Gmail or your Google Drive. The way you check that, and I'm going to do it on, on my computer. The way okay. you check that is to go to Google One. One.google.com. And, store, and make sure you're signed in with your account. I see my little face in the upper right-hand corner. And click Storage. And it will tell you how much storage is being used by Google Drive or Gmail or Google Photos. So, so that's one. That just gives you the information. The second thing I would do is check to make sure that she's using storage saver size on her phone. Well, let me show that. On the phone, in Google Photos, under settings. Settings are under the account button, your little face in the upper right-hand corner. And Google Photos settings, backup. What are the settings involving backup? And it's this one right here. Backup quality storage saver. That's what you want rather than original quality. Storage saver will use sometimes a bit less than half the space of original quality. And yet you won't see, you won't see any quality difference. You know, maybe a professional photographer that's blowing up to a to a wall size mural, they would have a problem with storage saver size. But those of us who are just keeping our memories, storage saver is just fine. But if you didn't have it at storage saver, then maybe the, the last 10,000 pictures that were uploaded were all in original quality. Is there a way to retroactively compress them down to storage saver quality. Yes, that has to be done on the computer. At Google Photos, Settings, Manage Storage. Notice that this has storage saver too. So anything uploaded on the web is in storage saver. Manage Storage. And then here also is where it suggests, well, you have seven gigabytes of large photos and videos you might want to delete. You can click there, review the large photos and videos and delete what you want. But like I say, it takes a lot of deleting to free up any space. But this recover storage is really nice. Convert existing photos and videos to storage saver. So if you've just uploaded 10 gigabytes worth of original quality and you go here and compress existing photos and videos, it should compress the 10 gigabytes down to about five and, and free up that space. It can also take a while though. It can take a while before that compression uh, reflects itself in your storage space. So really, I highly recommend, especially if you're using Gmail, if you're using Gmail and you've hit your limit, you can't use Gmail anymore. You can't receive or send emails. So spend the $2 to upgrade to the 100 gigabytes. If you then compress everything down, you can stop. You can go back to the free level. So that's what I have to say about that. Good. <laughs> Where are we? 
I guess we Mindy have a, has another one. Okay. I think Banners I have that right or, here. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Are there are there little circular icons on some images? Are they things I have already shared? No. The circular icon, you must have an iPhone because you don't see those those icons on uh, on the Android. The circuit, oh, no, that's changed. It used to be a circular. <laughs> now it's a little cloud with a line through it. But On the Apple. Yeah. Um, if I, let me go back to my account. And if I take a picture, so I'll, no, I'll got to take a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> the birthday boy. Okay. And now I go back to Google Photos. If I've done it quick enough. Nope. See, it just uploaded really fast. The circular arrow usually means this photo is waiting to be uploaded. Or it's being uploaded. If it's actually spinning, okay. it's in process of upload. It has nothing to do with sharing. It just has to do with uploading, okay. whether it's uploaded or not. Google Photos freezes on my phone phone and sometimes shows blurry photos now i think freezes on my phone that that's something with your phone i would force quit google photos that means go into multitasking mode and swipe it off the screen i would reboot your phone turn it power it down and power it back on again if that still happens then my bet is you know, your phone's getting full or there's a conflict with another app. So see if you can think of how long this has been going on. And if you installed another app about that time, I would try uninstalling that app and seeing if it helps. But and the blurry photos, I don't see how, you know, that's your camera. Yeah, shaking or something. So don't really have an answer for you on that one. Okay. Is there an easy way to transfer Google Photos en masse to a thumb drive or to an external hard drive? Yes. Not necessarily easy. Depends on how many photos you say you have. And here's where... So let me show you on my computer. Okay. So I have... I have a hard drive, an external hard drive. I, I think this is what you're talking about. And you want to get all your photos down on the external hard drive. First problem, <laughs> at least that I had, this external hard drive has a USB-A connector. My computer only has USB-C. So... Here's one. Yeah. <laughs> I need an adapter that goes, yeah, an adapter that I can put the USB-A in on this side and then plug it in to the C port on my computer. All right. Yeah, they can't see that. But that's so, okay. so now I have an external hard drive connected to my computer. And there it is. Seagate Backup Plus Drive F. Now I go to my Google Photos. And I can download an entire album. So we just went to Bimini and we have 90, I don't know, approximately 100, 100 pictures in this album. I open the album, click the three dots, and download all, download all. And I have the option to put it on that hard drive in a minute. <laughs> I mean, I just get a normal files window on my computer and I can say, there's the hard drive and I want it in my pictures and it will create a zip file. 
with the same name as the album. Now, you might be saying, well, I don't have any albums. I want to just select all my photos. Well, I have 100,000 photos in my Google Photos. There is no select all. But I could, let's say I'm backing up from 2021. I could get all my photos from 2021, select the first one, scroll away, and shift click. Notice it now says I have 150 selected. So you have to do this kind of in chunks, but you can just keep shift clicking and you get, you get more. And once you've done the whole year, I think you can have up to 5,000 in one group. Then you three dots, download, and it will take all the Oops, there was a message. I don't know what it said. Anybody notice it? I didn't get it. <laughs> okay, so it didn't like something. I'll select and shift click. Maybe had um, and animation in there. Too many? Well, that shouldn't matter because no, it, it makes a zip drive. That's right, it makes a zip file. folder. All right. Well, so now I have 128 selected. Three dots download preparing to download 128 items okay so it takes a second it's gathering them all and putting them in a zip file but once that's done you can put them anywhere you want on your computer in the c drive in any attached hard drive or thumb drive but it's 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 taking a little bit of time here. So oh, okay, we can go on. But but that's how you do it. All right. These are comments live. Show how to save a photo received in Gmail to your iCloud account. Okay. iCloud, that must mean this person is on an Apple. So I need to, I don't know if I've received a an image in in my emails lately. So I'm looking for an email that has, that somebody sent me an image. There we go, Ron Brown. <laughs> so I'm on an iPhone. I'm opening up an email that has an image in it. And that image is inside the envelope, if you will. So all you have to do to get it to go to either Google Photos and or iCloud, whichever you have running on your phone, you tap on the photo or long press. There we go. Long press on the photo and save to photos. Now it is as if you took that photo. I can go to my Apple Photos, and there, there it is. If you have iCloud uh, copying your Apple Photos, then it's done. And or Google Photos. Mine go to both. <laughs> so the key there was long press and save. Save to photos. Okay. A quick shout out to Michael Daniels. Thank you. I, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We're going to be on Michael Daniel's show apparently in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? A couple yeah. months? A couple of weeks? <laughs> I don't know. Right, anyway, five. Michael Daniels has a wonderful, wonderful channel here on YouTube and a membership website. I learn a lot from Michael. Check it out. And if you want to, you can go ahead and put that in the chat. That's That's cool stuff. Thank you, sir. And Roger Wilson's question about 15 gigabyte limit. Make Gmails are not important to save. Try to delete them as they arrive. <laughs> good luck with good that. Luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so you know, I have I have hundred thousand emails too. <laughs> she's awesome. So I pay for storage. <laughs> yeah, you are so smart. Was that meant for me or her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roger.
Roger. You t- now, what you usually say to that is, you are so smart for marrying me. <laughs> no, I was smart for marrying you. Best thing I ever did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Judy can clean up her drive. It's a beautiful day at the Skip Saguaro Co-op in Benson, Arizona. Yeah, no worries about deleting photos from Google Photos by deleting them from Google Drive. If you do it that way, right. And say hi to our RVing friends out there in yeah. Arizona. We have a few. Okay. Where'd I go? I think I'm down here. Uh, shout out. Thank you. I think we're there. We're back there was, over yeah, here. Yeah, there were still a few oh, more. Yeah, we're not done okay. yet. Easy way. Oh, we just did that one. Okay. Oh, I did want to make one more comment on thumb drives. And, and, and this also is a plug for next week's show. Next week, we're back to our regularly scheduled episodes of What Does This Button Do? And our topic is how to transfer photos from phone to computer. Nothing, you know, Google Photos, not necessary. Just how do you do that? And one of the ways you can get a thumb drive that has the connector for your iPhone or or for your Android, the C, or for your computer. So this one little thumb drive can plug into an Android phone, an Apple phone, or a computer. So that's that's really the easiest way to transfer things. Okay, Ron, how do I edit a live photo to make it a still? Well, when you edit it, it makes it a still, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me find, I mean, all of my photos are live photos. I love live photos. She has a lot of memory. <laughs> I love live photos. Um, so, okay. Uh, how about on the computer? Okay. And this is the same on a phone or on the computer. This is a live photo. Mm-hmm. Google Photos, you click the little play button to see the motion. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> moon over Miami. Moon over Miami. That's where we were. Full wolf moon, the January full moon. That's one of the brand new virgin ships, cruise ships. Beautiful. But we were out for uh, a little moonlight cruise with live jazz music. And, <laughs> you know, we have such a rough life, don't we? I know, I know. But it's it's all part of the research at Geeks on Tour. <laughs> Believe us. <laughs> if I click edit, it tells me editing turns off motion. That's what I thought. Your changes will be saved as a still photo. Um so I don't know. Do you have a, a follow up to that question? Maybe I'm missing something. Is it is it the same on an iPhone live? Because that's a that's an Android motion photo. That one. Mm-hmm. And well, this that I just took right is a uh, yeah. This one is an iPhone live photo and if i tap edit no it doesn't give me that message Hmm. it doesn't say that it'll turn off so just a second let me let me just play this one okay so it's absolutely an iphone live photo edit and i'll do that uh vignette I remember that. <laughs> and done. And save. This photo is shared every blah, blah. And save. And modify. Yeah, it is no, it doesn't give me the warning, but it is no longer a live photo. So there you go. So there you are, you see. Okay. H-E-I-C, that's a big confusion. Now, that's another days. one. Yeah. How do I share an H-E-I-C photo in JPEG format? And this is like a trick question. Well, no, it's just, it's a, confusion. it's a so many options questions. First of all, what is H-E-I-C? Yeah, it's high efficiency image format or 
I don't know what the C stands yeah, for. AGI. Anyway, but it's better than JPEG. JPEG is an old format for compressing image files. And it's what they had back then. <laughs> and everybody adopted JPEGs because it was a good format. It was a lossy format, which means pixels got dropped when things got compressed, but it was great for the internet and compression. Well, this, they've gotten it better. That's all it is. HEIC is the next iteration of JPEG. It's, it's really created by the same people. It's nothing that is, you know, Apple was the first one to adopt it as a, as a, uh, a native format. Yeah, but now, in fact, just in preparing for this Q&A, I learned that my Samsung S21 Ultra is saving an HEIC whether I want it to or not anymore. It used to give me the choice, HEIC or JPEG. Now I don't have the choice. It's on HEIC yours. on my Samsung S21 Ultra. Right. Now on my son's Samsung, which is slightly older, he, he does <clears> not, <throat> his is not HEIC, certainly by default. I have high efficiency format on mine. You do? You didn't last, I knew. I thought I had. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, we're in transition right now. HEIC is a better photo file format, but not everybody has adopted it yet. It's getting more and more. But so if you need to send a picture to somebody who can't read HEIC, that's pretty rare these days, but you need to convert it to JPEG. The easiest way on, so even, is to edit it. So I edited this one and just saved it, and it is still an HEIC. But if I edit it and just, I don't know, choose anything else and save copy, if I save copy, now it's a JPEG. Wow. So that's... Now, if you have to convert a lot, if you have 100 HEICs and you want them all to be JPEGs, then, you know, Google for a conversion utility. There's, there's, a, there's a ton of them. But just one at a time, you can edit, save copy. The copy in Google Photos anyway will be a JPEG. Or downloading from the computer. If you're on Google Photos on the computer and you download an HEIC, it becomes a JPEG. Okay. How do I share an album link that some folks find creates a PDF document on their computer? A PDF. And of... sorry, I don't know. But let me, let me just show sharing a link to an album and see if that's the way you do it. So this is... a. Uh, my iPhone happens to be the one under the camera right now. So that's what I'm going to use. And I have a album called Pelican Harbor event that has 84 items in it. I, I would tap that and then three dots and share and then share two. And copy link. That's that's the most accepted way to share an album. That link has been copied. Now I will go to an email, for example, and I will start a new email. And in the body of the email, you just paste the link. Long press and oh. And that does seem to happen all the time. I have to go back, get the, well, here, the easy way now is I can just tap on that. Copy link. Link copied. Back to email. Tap. 
paste. All right. So that's all you're sending. I don't see how that can turn into a PDF. I, you know, when the recipient receives that link, it's a link. <laughs> you tap the link and it takes you to the web and shows you the pictures. So in, unless there's something that you're doing differently from what I just did, I don't know. Michael, will Google Photos continue to upload when I am in Ireland and elsewhere outside the USA? Will I be able to make and receive phone calls and texts on your telephone? <clears throat> Maybe. Two things. Uh, Google Photos will continue to upload as long as your device, your phone, has an internet connection. It can get an internet connection either from cell towers, which probably won't work. I don't know the track phone. You'd have to you'd have to look at your terms of service and your track phone and see if it has connection connectivity when you're in Ireland. You know, ours does. Mm -hmm. Our Google Fi has connectivity wherever we go. But the second way is with Wi-Fi. And it's available nearly everywhere you are. Wi-Fi is all over the place. So as long as you connect your phone to a local Wi-Fi, your photos will keep going. Whether or not you can make calls and send texts, once again, is up to your track phone plan. And we did a couple of shows, episode 233. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show over here. So if you go to geeksontour.com and YouTube show and look for 233. See, they're all numbered. So you just go down to 233, cellular phone and data for international travelers. And we talk all about it there. Okay. My question has to do with ownership of photos, if you use Google Photos. Okay. So I, I assume that what you're talking about is people think if they upload their photos to the cloud, they're just going to Google and anybody can see them. No, 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 no. Google Photos is really pretty special. It is private for your eyes only. It is under the lock and key of your username and password. If you go read their terms of service, it says your content remains your, the very first sentence is your content remains yours, which means you retain any intellectual property rights that you have to your content. Now it goes on, you have to give Google rights to create from your work. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make collages, you know, but it's still your photos for your eyes only until you share them. Now, if you share, if you share your photos with me, you've said here, you know, take a look and you can have them. And I could then paste them on Facebook or, or wherever, but as long as you have not shared them, they are for your eyes only private and not even with any advertising. Do you notice that you see advertising in your Gmail? You do not see advertising in your Google photos. So Danny has a follow-up. I guess this is related, you know, how private is it? And you just said, yeah, Danny has photos backed up in iCloud, but is interested in Google Photos, but how it really concerned. Well, not to worry. How's that? Yeah, they, they really are very, very concerned. In fact, they err on the other side. Too careful. They're, they're too, you know, sometimes people can't get to their own photos because they lost their password and they can't prove that they are the owner of the photos. So yeah, Google is overly protective of your access to your photos. 
Judy wants to know if there's a way to send large photos as attachments in Google Mail when it says that the file size is too large to send. Yeah, send with a link. Right. Don't bother trying to send attachments. They're too big. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't attach the file. Include a link to the files, to the photos. Can photos taken from iPhone help sell items on Google Lens? How do you use Google Lens? We have some... Okay, well, I'll show what she's talking about. Okay. Um, I have some examples of Google Lens. L-E-N-S. <clears throat> so, and for products, let's see. We're looking at... Uh, yeah. So here's an RV. I tap on that RV and I tap the lens button. That's this. It's supposed to look like a camera lens. Tap it. It investigates. And it says, well, that looks like a Ram ProMaster cargo van. And if you want to buy one, here, here you go. <laughs> And it'll take you to sales pages. But that pic, that the photo was my photo. Only I can see that. But Google Lens investigates that photo and finds other ones on the internet that it think matches. But the but Google Lens does so much more. Like, like what is that flower? Tap Google Lens. It tells me that's a purple passion flower. She likes that. I do. And what is that shell? Tap Google Lens. Chamber Nautilus. It tells me that it is a Nautilus. Yeah. All right. Come on. Okay. Jeez. More questions? <laughs> I have three old phones with pictures on them. Are you saying I can download to an external hard drive? And what type to get? Yeah. Absolutely. The biggest one that you can. Yeah, right. The biggest one that you can because they're so cheap now. Just these. Who these else guys? has an old brain? <laughs> Michael Daniels, you betcha. We can't wait to be there. Linda, I have an Android. If I get a picture and message, what? Ever if I say save to phone, does it save in photos too? It depends on your messaging app, but very likely it saves in a special folder on for that messaging app. And you need to go into Google Photos, tap on library, find the folder for that messaging app and say, include it in my Google Photos. Yeah, that just happened Back to up. me today. So I had to make sure that that folder was going to be backed up. And that only is for Androids. Right. iPhones don't have that issue. iPhones, there's all photos are in one big dump. No such thing, yeah. Uh, there's a link for Michael Daniel's show. I'm sure there is, Michael. <laughs> it's... Tinkering. I will be sending it out before it happens, but yeah, but go ahead. But if he wants there. to put in a link Absolutely. here, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> Bill says, Linda, from years of experience, get as large a drive as you can afford. There's you, you can get a terabyte drive for less and a solid state drive. I recommend using a USB external uh, for less than 100 bucks. Gosh, it's amazing what you can do these days. All right. High efficiency image container. container. I knew that. I just couldn't come up with container. the word. Thank you so much. Yeah. We have the best people watching. <laughs> so knowledgeable. Joel says you can make a PDF of an album if you download the images and use something like Adobe Acrobat to create a PDF of them all. <sighs> yes, yeah, sure. Can. But that's a lot of work. And the, the question, the way I read the question is it just happened automatically when she sent a link that it became a PDF. Uh, that they're in somehow. Who knows? I don't know. But yeah, if you really want to make a PDF. Yeah, good. All right. We saw that. Okay. You, worth using a VPN overseas and will it work on various Wi-Fi systems? It depends on what you want to use the VPN for. If you want to the reason for a VPN, there's a lot, a lot of reasons, but most people use them to spoof international servers into believing that you are somewhere 
and an area that is that uh, you're not that you're not so you can receive say netflix in some european countries that have it that have it um you know, blocked or whatever, uh, other things like that. If you're using a, a corporate server for business or something like that, you probably already have a VPN. But if you think you're going to stay more secure, nah. uh, but it, they are very good for certain things and there's some great things. To, and to I don't see any about. reason why it wouldn't work on various Wi-Fi systems overseas. But they could. Yeah. We, we haven't actually used VPNs. And if, if you do want more information on VPNs, our, our friends at uh, Gone with the Winds, they're, they're sponsored by a VPN. Right. But, I but I, I trust when they live all over the world and they use and the they VPN all the time. Yeah. Okay, how to scan a QR code on the screen. All you really need to do is open up the camera app on your phone and point it at that little QR code up there and it will... There'll, a link will come up on your screen. You can tap that link and find out where to sign up for our... Right. Okay. But she's saying, how do I do that when I'm already using the phone to watch your video? I can't then open the camera and snap the... I can't snap another screen because it's Absolutely on this screen. Absolutely correct. So how do you do that? Take, Take a, a screenshot. Screen Take a screenshot. And come back to it later. And then open the screenshot in Google Photos... And Lens can read the QR code. Okay. Barbara says, I used a VPN in Egypt to enable WhatsApp. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. So, But without right. it, I couldn't call anyone on WhatsApp. So cool. All right. Debbie Diver says, thanks. Thanks for your birthday card. Bark, bark. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. Hey, it's three. It's after three. It's my birthday. I'm leaving. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for being here. You make and we're not we're not doing a backstage pass with no, this one. No, no, she has something special planned for me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no backstage pass today. We will see you next week with a regular a regular scheduled. What does this button and, do episode? And we will have a backstage pass with the Zoom and all that stuff. Thank you so much for being here. Roger says he loves Gone with the Winds. They did a video with me. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you've been around a long time. Okay. Happy, 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 happy. Thank <laughs> you so much. You know, we love you guys. <laughs> We're out of here.